Legend himself. Right. No, I'm so happy you're here. I'm happy to be here, man. I, I've heard a lot about you. I think you're the only man that can fix me, to be honest. Well, it's quite a story. It's a pleasure to meet you. How can I help? Can we jump right into, do I have brain damage, yes or no? Yes. Do I? Yes. Okay. I don't know what I don't remember, just because I don't remember it, and I'm trying to, you know, figure things out. So, your goal? Well, fix my brain. I like that goal, fix my brain. Yeah. What I'd like you to do is walk me through the accident. Okay. Last year. All right. So we're all YouTubers. We're uh, content creators. We push it every time to make our videos better. And I'm obviously obsessed with my uh, profession, you know, creating. I'm very passionate about everything. So I have something embedded in me that I don't know if it's like a bad thing or a good thing, but I just want everything to be perfect and just be the best I could be when I put out these videos because I know they have a limitless potential. The internet, you could reach so many people. And I got to a point last year with the pandemic that I was just kind of making videos by myself, joking around. And I turned 30 years old. And that's like a, a thing where, you know, your 20s are over. So you need to start taking life a little more serious. I can't just be, you know, making these silly, stupid videos anymore. I can, but also I was searching for something more. I wanted something deeper. I wanted to make a bigger project, like instead of the normal, just make people laugh and bring joy to them temporarily. Maybe I can make something that will stick with people and resonate with them for life and they can take what I do and, and uh, you know, it'll help them in their lives. So um, I got a little too confident. The stunt was for my friend's video, um, who was a huge YouTuber. He was the biggest one on the platform at the time. I was getting certified to do a big stunt at the end for his video. There's this excavator on a lake that spins a rope around with a wakeboard on it. It kind of spins in one spot so you could film everything. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's scary. I broke my hip. I had nine fractures in my skull and face, and um, I had a full orbital blowout. So I had seven implants put through one here, one here. They're all they're all over the place. The doctor doesn't even tell me because there's so many of them. I remember um, I couldn't see out of this eye at the time. It was completely just blurry, but I didn't know if it was blood in my eye or what was going on. I was still kind of in shock. Um, I was still able to walk even at the time. And I had that fracture in my hip and torn tendons in my leg, but I was able to like walk off the beach and they rushed me to the hospital, just took me in a car, we didn't wait for an ambulance. Cause everybody thought I was gonna die. I was pale white and um, I lost a lot of blood. And I went to take the visor down and my friends stopped me. They were like, no, 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 don't, don't look at it. So that's when I realized like, it's bad. Since the accident, what are the big symptoms you've experienced? Definitely depression. Um, I never thought that depression or anxiety or anything like that was even a real thing. When I heard people talk about having it, I thought it would just be like, okay, you're just a little nervous or something, or like you're like overreacting. And now, I go through it, so it's just something I never expected that I would go through. I was in jail and I didn't go through it, you know? And, but now, at this point in my life, I, it got dark. Like, a couple months in there after the accident, it was some of the darkest days of my life, I'd say around like Christmas time. Just, it could be the accident, it could be everything, it could be the pandemic, and not being able to fly home and be with family for Christmas and just be alone. Mm -hmm. So it's just something that I'm, it, it's always on my mind. 
I have to live with these injuries for the rest of my life. How many times have you had general anesthesia? Seven in the past eight months. You can actually get depressed and brain fog after anesthesia. Now we can repair it, but it, most anesthesiologists never tell you that. Mm -hmm. They just think it's innocuous. Yeah. So, so what I have from the records is you don't feel like yourself. Really the only way out of this is to forgive and move on because accidents happen and... Well, I'm glad he didn't kill you. Yeah. So we have to get to work on fixing it. Yeah. And fixing it isn't just the brain. It's also your mind mm -hmm. and they go hand in hand mm -hmm. and holding, holding on to the bitterness isn't going to help you heal. Yeah. So, um, it's just on a day to day basis. How's your mood? Um, obviously with YouTube and stuff, you have a video that gets a good response. I have like a boost of happiness. For about a day or two but then it immediately turns into okay now i need to get back to work and top what i just did and that's kind of the cycle that is a little toxic but it's, hard. it's also like we a, have a term know, for it it's called hedonic adaptation it's he, hedonic it's like happiness mm -hmm. and but the more it happens the more you need to do to make happiness happen again and uh, you just have to make sure you find happiness in other things too. So, uh, cause it, your memory score actually is fine. Oh, that's, that's good to know. Your focus score was okay too. I repeat your a lot of stories. Your stress, anxiety and depression scores are high. So that's not good. Yeah. And your conscious negativity was too high. So if we can fix that, then consistently you'll be happier without having to do something amazing. Give me the pill, Doc. I'm ready. The red one or the blue one? So, want to see your brain? Yeah. Spec tells us three things. Good activity, too little, or too much. Mm -hmm. And then our job is to balance it. So it needs some help. Yeah. Your brain can be better. Okay. The area that's going to become really important is right here, which is right where you had the injury. It's right, right there. there. Yeah. We're going to see your emotional brain really busy. When we look at your scan, here is where the accident happened. So here's your cerebellum and it's great. It's really healthy. So that's good news for us. Cause that's the most important part. Well, no, the most important part's here. And the but, most important part is what's screwed up. Yeah. Because the front part of your brain is the part that makes you human. Mm -hmm. And when it's hurt, you can be impulsive and say things maybe you shouldn't say or do things you shouldn't do. Yeah. Um, Sounds about right. And that's why we have to fix it. Here, your emotional brain is working way too hard. And so that's probably the anxiety and the sadness that you feel. And so if I can calm that down and stimulate the front part of your brain, you're going to feel better. I don't want you to think you are permanently damaged. We don't know that. I think I can make this better. Those look like some big nasty holes in there though. They do. It's what happened to you was real, right? I mean, you know that. Yeah. And, and you can also see this dent. Is that bad? You can, this is why I don't want you drinking and I don't want you smoking pot. Um, and I know you had a problem with drinking and you stopped. Yeah, I'm no, really alcohol. grateful in three years that you stopped. Problems but do you, do you see the bumpiness? I don't like the bumpiness. Your brain is older than you are and we want to fix that. But if you do what I ask you to do like four months from now or six months from now, 
watch what can happen. It can be better. Wait, like, what? Radically better. That's good news. But if we don't look, how do we know? So the holes could go... You can, we can get better blood flow to your brain. The front part of your brain, focus, forethought, judgment, impulse control, organization, planning, empathy, learning from the mistakes you make. Mm -hmm. Every day through what you do, you're either helping your brain be healthier mm -hmm. or you're hurting. And I don't want you doing stupid stuff that's going to get you a head injury from now on. You just have to get more creative in how you're going to make the videos. But yeah. I want you at least thinking, is this good for my brain or bad for it? I just want you to be more anxious mm -hmm. about protecting your brain. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, how bad would you say it is? Or let's do 10 is the best. 10 is the best. Yeah. Yours is a four. I don't think it was that bad. Most people, six. Our goal is to get yours to a seven or an eight. It's possible. You just got to do the right thing. When you get hit really hard, there's a gland called the pituitary gland. Yeah. It gets rattled. Yeah. And it sort of turns it off. Yeah. And so somebody should check your testosterone, DHEA, pregnenolone, thyroid, um, and balancing those can help you so much. Yeah. So there's a brain part to it we'll talk about. There's a mind part to it. It's a social part to it, who are you mm -hmm. hanging out with? And a spiritual part, which is sort of why do you care? What's your purpose for being on the planet? And, and I actually like that you're not holding on to the hurt, that you don't want to do that, because that's not going to help you. Mm -hmm. Whenever you sue someone because they hurt you, you have to stay hurt. Yeah. And I. That's a lousy place to be. The two most important things here for me is fixing my eye and fixing my brain. And That's it. then I feel like I'll be closest back to myself and then I can move on with my life. You've worked so hard and have become so successful. Yeah. Um, tell me about the clonopin. The Ambien's not working anymore. It saved me for the past three years, but I'm like dealing with serious emotional stress now. Um, and he suggested Klonopin because I, I was given Klonopin from a friend on the street. I took it and I was like, all right, this, this is cool. I feel a little chilled out. I was able to function and work and do. Um, I'm not on anything now, but you know, even though you probably think I am, <laughs> I'm just a little uh, wacky sometimes. It's a don't, coffee. Don't read my mind. Um, yeah. Right now. I, I would rather you not take it. Okay. That was a mistake on your doctor's part. I'm going to have Alzheimer's by 35. You are not, because we met. Yeah. <laughs> I would feel terrible if you did. I'd like, oh, well, that This didn't guy work. went downhill quick. <laughs> no, I think we're, we've already hit rock bottom, and I'm already kind of just organically coming back up and becoming my old self. So I feel like this will speed up the process.